Hey guys, uh, Matt Gabriel here, back with another video and a very special uh, and very important video actually um, for you today and that is top 10 film photography tips on a budget. So if you're a student like me or you just don't have that much money, how to get great photos in film photography, how to get the best cameras and the best film um, on a budget. So. That's what the overview of the video is going to be like today, and let's get straight into it. So, my first tip would be how to actually get into film photography. If you have been shooting on your phone or um, have a digital Canon EOS camera or Nikon camera, that kind of thing, how to get into film. If you've seen on Instagram other people been shooting film, how to get into it. And my advice is to ask around. Ask your family, ask your friends to see whether they may have an old film camera in their in their attic or in a cupboard somewhere, and that's exactly what happened with this camera. This is the Pentax Me Super. It is an entry level film photography camera, thirty five millimeter camera. Came with the fifty millimeter one point seven lens, so a pretty basic um, aperture uh, aperture priority uh, camera but still gets great photos. And this was given to me by my grandparents, so I paid nothing for this. So that's a great way to get straight into it um, by asking your family to see if someone's got one lying around, you can get one for free then, and then you can have a great camera. Um, if not, go to the charity shop. The charity shop is a great place to find a film camera without having to go onto eBay and paying postage and, and, and finding out what is a good camera because really when you're starting film photography it doesn't matter what camera you have you need to learn the basics so that is my top tip number one buy any camera buy any cheap film go and shoot it and then take it to the high street uh, Max Spielman snappy steps that kind of thing just to see how your results are first okay so now on for tip number two and tip number two is use expired film. Expired film is cheaper than fresh film straight from a factory. Yes, you aren't supporting uh, the film movement by getting more film made, but it's cheaper for you. It's film which people have found in their cupboards, know that film is popular now and want to get some money for it. So this is some Kodak Gold 200 which was expired about 20 years ago. Uh, bought that from eBay for about £6 for three rolls of 36 exposures, so you're looking at quite a saving there. Um, this was from a charity shop, I've not shot this yet, I'm not really sure what it looks like. And this again was from eBay, or a charity shop, I can't remember. Um, and it's really easy to shoot the expired film. I've got a whole video on it which I'm going to put in um, as a little card now, but it's so easy to shoot expired film. Uh, all you have to do is look up the DX codings, or if you don't even if you have a manual camera like the Pentax Me Super, which I just said, it's you just um, shoot it as the ISO um, ten year. You shoot one stop overexposed for every ten years it's expired. But go watch my video on that and uh, learn more about shooting expired film. It's great. Um, and it's a great way of saving some money on film. Okay, so on to my tip number three, and that is go to your charity shop. Go to the charity shop and see what they have. Um, whilst you're in town buying your shopping every week, just go to the charity shops that you know are the best charity shops to have a wander around and see what you get. Um, in my local town, I've got a few which I know occasionally have film photography, uh, point and shoots and things so and I have a look and see whether there's something for a good deal there which I can buy and sell on or whether there's something I actually want so I've had like underwater film for 35 uh, millimeter cameras uh, and then today which I'm just going to show you now is these two boxes of 200 expo 200 ISO 36 and 24 exposure boots um, film and it exp expired in 2010, this one and this one is 2011. So I'll be able to stick the black tape on that and shoot that uh, as expired film. And that's a great saving there because that's even cheaper than expired film on eBay. Okay, so tip number four is a really simple tip that I use a lot. And it's not really talked about on the internet, but um, using your kind of scientific brain, if you will, you can understand how this works. So say I wanted to uh, shoot something in this Minolta 
uh, camera, but I didn't want to shoot it all, so I've just got this roll here which I use for testing. It's a completely dead roll, but um, so say I shoot like five things with this roll. Let's just quickly load it. Okay, so say I take a few photos. But and then I'm like, oh, actually, I don't want to use the whole roll of this. So this might be a special roll, like a portrait or something that means a lot to you and you don't want to keep in a camera and then you want to get it developed quickly. So you want to interchange it between cameras. So this is my tip, how to interchange a roll of film between cameras whilst you're currently using it. So what you want to do is to just before the end of the roll. So imagine this is rewound. I've rewound it in the camera and I'm hearing for when it's just, it's gone to zero on the camera, it's just come out, so then when I take it out of the camera, it will look like this. If it's not like this and it's gone in, go on the internet and look at how to get, retrieve your film leader from inside a film canister, it's really simple. Um, and then I say I've got this roll of film now, and I want to put it in the Olympus XA. Well, what you would do is open the back, place the film in there, and then advance it and then go into the dark. Once you're in the dark, remember what number it was. So we shot five rolls on five frames on the Minolta. Once you're in the dark, then shoot. I'd probably advise shooting at the uh, lowest aperture that you can to let the less light, less amount of light in. But you want to shoot um, that many frames in the dark. So how film works is it registers the light on, to, and it, the light reacts with the uh, strip of film here, and that's how you get your image. But if you're in the dark, there's no light to add to that um, strip of film, so you're not adding anything to that frame. So you can take five photos in the dark, maybe add a few more frames just to make sure, and then you can happily start shooting from where you left off. Tip five is a bit of a weird one because it's not one that I've actually explored myself, but it is developing at home. So if you can afford it and you want to take the risk, take the upfront cost, buy a Paternoster tank, buy the development chemicals. Uh, if you've got a bath or something like that, it's a great place to do it and develop at home and then get yourself a scanner as well. You will save money. You will save money and you'll be able to develop as fast as you can, so you won't have to wait for it to come back from a lab. Okay, so my sixth tip is to develop with a company called thefilmdev.co.uk. And thefilmdev.co.uk is a company based out of Stockton Ponties in the UK. So how you do it, is send your film off in a jiffy bag, and then you put the address on, fill out this order form which is showing you now, and you'll see that the photo, the per roll is four pounds, which is an amazing deal compared to high street retailers or other companies. So this is the best value that you possibly can have in the UK at the moment. Um, black and white, not so, it's not as cheap. I would recommend a company called The Latent Image based out of Shrewsbury and Shropshire for black and white development. But for color photography, which most people will be doing uh, on a budget, um, is four pounds which is a very very good value um, and then they send you your negatives back in the post uh, first class and large large letter and that kind of stuff and it's a really really good service okay so my seventh tip would be to buy and you may or may not like me for saying this but to buy a point and shoot and the main reason for that is the best camera that you have the best camera that you have is the one that you have on you and that is true. So a point and shoot you can have on you all the time. And I'd recommend to buy a point and shoot that has a built-in flash. Um, the Olympus XA is a great point and shoot, but the flash isn't built in and it is chunky on the outside. So this is not something I use as much as Ishika T5 or Mu1 that I've used in the past. Um, it's so easy to shoot, it's all automatic and it's got a flash and it's great for going out with your friends, going to parties and things, and you get great photos. Um, so buy a point and shoot because you don't have to go expensive um, this didn't cost me that much money because I was very very lucky but a point and shoot with a built-in flash like the Mu1 
um, is a is a really good investment. Don't spend too much money on a point and shoot because they are very temperamental, and the electronics once they're broken are very very expensive to re- to um, repair, and the repair prices are really not worth it when it comes to point and shoots. So buy a point and shoot. Don't spend too much money. Um, I spent eighty pounds on this when they are going for like three hundred, four hundred pounds on the internet, and they can very very easily break. Um, so just buy a point and shoot, and you'll get you'll find that you're shooting film more and you'll get great results from them as well. Okay, so my eighth tip would be to sell your gas cameras. And what's a gas camera? If you're really into film and you're really excited by it, you're going to be buying a lot of cameras all the time. And you're going to be finding that you're not using your cameras. So this camera here is a the camera that I used for intermittent stage whilst I didn't have a point and shoot. I don't need this camera anymore. Um, I won't use it so what's the point in having it so I'll sell it um, and you'll find that my collection is now just three cameras the Pentax Mi Super the Olympus XA and the Ashika T5 that's all I need uh, for my personal needs so that's all that you should really need my rule of thumb is if I haven't used a camera for a month then get rid of it um, you should not be having cameras just sitting around doing nothing because they're not being used and you spend money on them. So this is just a rule of thumb in life in general, but if you don't need something, then you don't need it. Um, uh, genius <laughs> genius statement by, from me. Uh, put that in little, little quotes or whatever. But if you don't need something, you don't need it. If you don't use it, what's the point in having it? Use your cameras, and if you don't use them, sell them. Okay, so my ninth tip would be to watch YouTube videos, read books, and join Facebook groups. So a great Facebook group to join is the Negative Feedback Facebook group. Um, it's a great point of inspiration for me, seeing other people's photos, what film they're using, what cameras they're using. Um, and it's a really, really supportive uh, community. So if you have a, a lot of people who ask questions and you can find specific answers on here. So joining uh, Facebook groups such as the Negative Feedback one is gonna provide you with that new level of inspiration and you're going to feel more inspired about film photography also watch youtube videos like this one also you know negative feedback um king japes jvs however you say it uh, mike janik uh, awesomecameras.com uh, ed parvez uh, all those kind of people are really uh, creating an inspiring community for um film photography and it's really exciting to see you can also buy books as well. I've got a book up there, uh, Film Photographers, um, 35mm Photographers, and it has uh, different styles of shooting that, that you may not have encountered before and different cameras that you may not have seen before, and it's from that time as well, so it's quite inspiring. Um, so buy a book, yes, read books. And number 10 is to go onto eBay and look. Keep looking. So I said before with this Yashica T5 that I got it cheap. So I went on to eBay and just kept looking at Yashica T5s and um, there was one for £8. Bought it straight away. Had a few few nick bits that were wrong with it but I managed to uh, fix them such as the, the Super Scope was out of line. Look, 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 look on eBay. Keep persevering and you'll be okay. Don't give in to the £400 price tag of these cameras. And um, perhaps, 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 this is a risky one, but you can buy broken cameras on eBay and there could be a chance of it working. So this is a Yashica T5, again, I know, <laughs> but, but it was broken. But it, worked. but it comes out sometimes, comes out, doesn't come out, doesn't come out, you see? But sometimes it does come out. And this was listed as broken, so I bought it for 66 pounds. Um, and it works absolutely fine, exactly like the other one, but it just doesn't come out sometimes. If you find a camera that you really want, look for ones that have got nitpicks wrong with it, and you could get a great deal like this. Um, so that is a great tip. Look for broken cameras and see whether, like learn about the camera, learn how it works, and see whether you could buy that broken camera and it actually worked well for you. Um, I had a Yashica T4 which only shot only advanced half the film frame but for me I could just put that in the dark and then advance it and it would advance the whole frame um, 
so that is my 10th tip buy broken cameras in the, and make sure you know what you're, you're looking at but they can definitely pay off okay so that is my that is my 10 beginner or budget photo film photography tips when it comes to shooting uh, film photography it can be expensive and it can seem expensive but if you do it right and you follow my tips you can be rewarded with great photos and a great look on a budget so thank you very much for watching follow me on instagram at mattgabriel21 um, have a look at my other videos and i hope you have a great day thank you and goodbye